For the past century or so, the dominant trend in classical circles has been to deny any and all reality to the ancient gods. Richard Seaford, a world-renowned expert on ancient Greek religion, made the point most forcefully, quote, Greek deities are human constructions, end of quote. It follows, according to this prevailing orthodoxy, that the Greek myths telling of the great gods' lives and loves are the stuff of fiction, projections of human affairs onto an imaginary Olympus, as it were. It is our opinion that such views are wrong from A to Z, and that the Greek gods were real. We also maintain that the myths attached to the gods were empirically based and described catastrophic natural events during a recent prehistoric period. A few examples will suffice to illustrate the profound differences in our two positions. One of the most familiar tropes in Greek mythology is that the sun god Helios sees everything, hence the epithet all-seeing. In the Iliad, for example, Helios is invoked as you who see all things. The very same claim appears in the Odyssey and in various plays of the great dramatists. This trope is employed for comedic effect in a famous scene in the Iliad, wherein Zeus assures Hera that their furtive lovemaking will be invisible even to Helios thanks to the golden cloud he has created. Quote, Not even Helios can look at us through it, although beyond all others his light has the sharpest vision. End of quote. Why exactly Helios was ascribed sharp vision has never been answered. The conventional explanation, entirely ad hoc in nature, maintains that inasmuch as the solar orb travels across the entirety of the sky with each passing day, he must perforce be capable of seeing anything and everything. Martin West's opinion is representative in this regard. Quote, the sun's capacity for seeing everything that people do qualifies him as a supervisor of justice or at least gives him a valuable role as the god of justice's eye and as a trusty witness, end of quote. Interestingly enough, Zeus shares the very same ability with Helios. In Works and Days, Hesiod states that, quote, the eye of Zeus sees all things, end of quote. Far from being an error on the part of the Boeotian bard, the same idea is current among the early poets. Thus, Sophocles makes reference to the ever-vigilant eye of Zeus Morios, quote, for the sleepless eye of the Morian Zeus beholds it, end of quote. Here we find an unequivocal reference to the round eye, or kuklos, of Zeus. Yet kuklos is the very phrase employed by Aeschylus to describe Helios's all-seeing eye. It is significant that a cognate term is employed to denote the all-seeing eye of the sun in Indic lore as well, namely kakra, commonly translated wheel. Quote, with his eye on men, he sits in the middle of heaven. So too, the Indic sun god is described as all-seeing and wide of vision, just like the Greek Zeus. How or why the ancient sun god should be equipped with a wheel-like eye remains unknown. Certainly, there is nothing about the present appearance of the solar orb that would suggest a wheel-like eye. Especially telling are traditions reporting that Zeus launched lightning-like fire from his eye. Aeschylus described the Greek thunder god as follows, quote, the jealous eye of God hurls the lightning down, end of quote. The same conception is evident in Euripides' Bacche, quote, unveil the lightning's eye, end of quote. With apparent reference to these archaic idioms preserved by the great dramatists, the Greek grammarian Hesychus observed that the phrase eye of Zeus meant a flash of lightning, as we have documented elsewhere, analogous traditions will be found around the globe. Indeed, a widespread tradition views lightning as the angry glance of the sun god's eye. This despite the fact that the sun and lightning have no conceivable relationship in today's sky. In order to understand the traditions before us, it is first necessary to identify an obvious celestial prototype for Zeus's lightning-hurling eye. Obvious, that is, for prehistoric sky watchers around the globe. Consider the image depicted in figure one, analogs of which are ubiquitous in rock art everywhere. Can it be doubted that were such an astronomical apparition to present itself in the northern circumpolar heaven, traditions of a sky god cyclopean eye would be virtually certain to follow? Now consider the image depicted in figure two, a close variation on the previous image, representing a slightly later phase in the evolutionary history of the polar configuration whereupon fiery lightning-like filaments radiate out across the disk of the sun. 
It is our view that the global traditions of a lightning emanating eye likely have their origin here. It will be noted that the central eye is composed of the conjoined orbs of Mars and Venus. Note further that the Greek word for lightning, asterope, preserves the inherent link to a material celestial body inasmuch as aster denotes star. This etymology alone offers compelling circumstantial evidence for the conclusion that the Greek concept of lightning was quite literally a star-based phenomenon. The archaic phrase star-flung thunderbolt preserved in an Orphic hymn points to the same conclusion, needless to say. Now consider the related image of the so-called sun cross. Prehistoric in nature, the image in question resembles nothing so much as a wheel centered on a solar disk, a wheel-like eye as it were. If the sun god's central cyclopean eye was conceptualized as a wheel-like object, it follows that the sending forth of fiery lightning-like rays might well be conceptualized as the act of seeing. Hence we understand the indissoluble connection between solar radiation and the act of seeing in various ancient languages. Yet Zeus's eye also flashed lightning, and thus we must expect to find an otherwise bizarre connection between the act of seeing and lightning-like pyrotechnics. The concrete nature of this meteorological imagery is most explicit in the Egyptian language, wherein Ma denotes the act of seeing, while Mat denotes lightning or lightning-like radiation. Yet the very same word also denotes the spokes of the wheel, a startling extension of meaning apart from the cosmogram depicted in figure 3, where the sun's rays are quite literally the spokes of a wheel. An analogous semantic development is apparent in ancient Greek, where Dirkamai denotes to see, look, but also, quote, flashing fire or lightning from his eyes, end of quote. Ruth Bielfeldt, surveying the Greek testimony, posits a direct connection between the act of seeing and fire. Quote, in both the Iliad and the Odyssey, we find the idea that fire, light, and vision form an inseparable unity. Not only is fire endowed with sight, but the eyes are in turn also conceived as fire-like, their glance figured as spraying sparks. Homer considers eyes and glances as themselves emissive of fire, end of quote. Such ideas have no conceivable basis in human biology or in Greek philosophical speculation, nor for that matter do they reflect the projection of human ideas onto the celestial landscape, rather the exact opposite. Such traditions were directly inspired by astronomical events, namely the awe-inspiring spectacle presented by a lightning-hurling eye in the northern circumpolar sky. If the classic raw sign in figure one was conceptualized as a cyclopean-eyed sun, the second image illustrates the emission of fiery lightning-like radiation from the god's central eye, universally conceptualized as a fiery glance or the act of seeing. Insofar as the visible ray-like structures emanating from the central eye pervaded the entire cosmos, defined in ancient times as a unified heaven and earth, it follows that the sun god saw everything that transpired in the cosmos. In short, there can be no denying the dramatic contrast between the naturalist historical reconstruction offered by Talbot and myself and the projectionist interpretation offered by orthodox scholarship. In a new book on Zeus published by the special series on gods and heroes of the ancient world, Ken Dowden begins by stating, quote, to us, Zeus is a mere fiction. And then he gets downright dismissive and condescending, quote, how could the Greeks have worshiped such an empty God? From beginning to end, Zeus has been unseen, operating the causal system of the universe in mysterious ways and underlying every event. The mythology was only a way of talking about Zeus, a figure of speech. No one believed that the gods actually had a palace at the top of a mountain in Thessaly. Mythology was always a parable, a transposition of the mysterious into another language. End of quote. It would be difficult to imagine a more erroneous opinion or one more disrespectful to the Greeks themselves. The manifold mythology surrounding Greece's greatest god far from being a parable or figment of imagination, accurately described terrifying planetary interactions of a catastrophic nature, albeit in figurative language. Thus it is that sky watchers around the globe witnessed lightning being launched from Zeus's eye. Make no mistake about it, Zeus was seen. 
Zeus was real. <laughs>